Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at ya with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void! And today it's going to be an Into the Void sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Into the Void. <clears throat> that just means it is a bronze or silver or gold level replay that you played. And uh, that's about it. So the top left corner of Thunderbird is Yudin. The Red Zerg player, and in the bottom right, it is the Blue Terran player, Ebony Shade. Fantastic names, both of these. Yudin, Yuiden? God, that's hard to say. Yuiden, Yuiden, and Ebony Shade. Feels kind of Japanese now that I'm saying it that way. Go figure. You'll be figuring. Alright, so these players, neither of them have portraits. Neither of them have portraits telling me <laughs> what league they are. And indicates we might be in for some pretty low-level stuff going on, and obviously we are now. Now, that's a pool first play, about a 17er, based on what I can tell from here from Yudin. Ebony Sheet is going, Shade is going double gas into barracks. Now, this can be good if you're going for like a mass reaper play, or some kind of a really strong, really lot of marauder opening. But, if you're just going for a bunch of marines, all this gas will be for nothing. So let's see what Ebony Shade's going to do here. Ebony Shade feels like a song. And there's your expansion from Yudin too. So actually, build order's not too shabby for an Into the Void match. And sometimes that's what you get. Interesting though, pool hatch gas. Not something you see very often, but... Honestly, any opening can be pretty good. As long as you have some combination of hatch gas pool in there. It really shouldn't kill you too much. If you do those out of order. I'm just going to tell you the truth right now. But have a, have a build order. Just go hatch gas pool. Just do it for me if you have any questions of how to play... How to play Zerg in the early stages anyway. Ebony is going for a Reaper. All right, so Reaper's name is Chell. She finally managed to get out of Aperture Facilities and is not exactly sure why she's flying or how she found herself out in space. Yeah, poor Shell. She just has had a rough go of it, man. All through Portal 1 and Portal 2. Portal 3 is never, ever going to happen because Valve is done making video games, apparently. Unless you talk about card games, which apparently is okay. But, man, alive. I just... The Half-Life series is never going to end. Portal is never going to end. Team Fortress is never going to get a third. It's just its a pattern. I don't i don't like it. At all. Alright, so we already got Lings out. They're going to come across the map. And they're probably going to meet up with the, with the Reaper here. Right in the middle somewhere. I'm going to guess right about here. Seems like a good meeting place. And then they're probably going to fight. And or... Yeah, the Lings are going to chase this thing around. You can kill all of these Slowlings by yourself, Reaper. If you're so inclined. But instead... Just gonna drag them away from the other side of the map. This is a one. This is a one one. Hmm. Not quite a one one one. Not quite a two one one either. Whatever this is, Ebony Shade has a general concept of what he's doing. So that's nice. Reaper coming on in. Bailing nest here from Yuiden, recognizing the threat of a one basing Terran. It is not a good thing. Actually, the Lings decided they don't need to stay home and defend at all. They're just gonna go ahead and. Uh, Man, this Reaper could get in and get some stuff done. I guess a Queen's going to pop, and that's going to shut it down a little bit. Marines on the outside here. All end up getting killed by these slow lings, and now they can go ahead and work on this wall without worrying too much about getting killed by anything. Sure, there's a tank on the way. Sure, there's a starport and some Marines in production. But, man, you could sit there and just hammer at it for a little bit anyway. At least force your opponent to spend resources repairing that stuff instead of doing other things that can kill you. I would have stuck around to try to kill that, or at least, again been a problem for the supply depot although the reaper came home so that would be the end of that anyway so perhaps correct decision out of Yuiden. still no expansion overlord sees this and says all right this was a one basing terran i'm very smartly not going to take a third I'm not going to drone up a whole ton here <clears throat> of course i'm not going to have much of an army either really should be making some more zerglings maybe some banelings you just you never know overlord does scout in though and sees a liberator he doesn't know it's a liberator but sees the marine sees the tank And says, all right, so Ling Bane Ling should be just fine here, in all honesty. Now, the thing about Ebony Shade is, you could do this Ebony Shade with an expansion at the same time. You go one Rax into an expansion, then do the rest of it all the same. Then you're on two bases, then you have a lot more income, then you can support a lot more buildings off of your infrastructure. Because as it stands, you're not doing super hot. You're also supply blocked, which is not helping. Ooh, and a fusion core coming in. Is this going to be, ooh, it's a tech lab and a fusion core. I'm feeling battle cruisery here. Yuiden is throwing in some safety spores as he saw the starport and doesn't know if that's banshees or liberators or Vikings or medevacs or battle cruisers. There's a lot of things that could mean. I guess he knows there is a liberator, so 
Liberator protection protection is in the form of spore crawlers and queens, generally. So one base in it here is Ebony Shade into. Well, I guess he has another expansion coming up. He's building it inside of his main base as he doesn't really feel comfortable walling off this and defending. That's another thing you should learn. If you're Protoss or Terran, you need to learn how to wall off. There are a lot of walling off tutorials on the internet. Just search wall off Protoss or wall off Terran Starcraft 2. You can find some stuff out here, but you generally need to do this. You need to be able to be able to take your. Need to be able to be able to? Kind of makes sense, but at the same time, it doesn't really. Anyway, double evolution chamber here from Whedon. Whedon. It's like I'm saying Whedon. But I'm not. And this does not count as a wall. This counts as something that will die to any kind of a Zerg attack at all. So, especially a bunch of speedlings, which don't exist, mind you. There are 24 lings on the map. I guess 24 lings would wreck this pretty easily. Depending on their upgrades, if they have any banelings with them, etc., etc. Overlord Speed coming in, Pneumatized Carapace, he really wants that vision of, again, doesn't have any overlords out on the map, that's something I'd recommend. I do like that they're set up on the edges of the base here, so you can tell when drops are coming more easily, I like that, but these overlords are doing nothing for you. Send them out! I know there is a Liberator out there, but the Liberator can't kill all of them, and just having some vision is not a bad thing. So, Army Supply, 36 to 24, bunch of stuff just popped for Yuiden. Ebony Shade is, in fact, making a battle cruiser here at this starport. Loving that. And as far as what the anti-battle cruiser stuff is, I guess there are four queens, five queens out. And it's time to take an expansion, and there it is. Okay, cool. So, Yuiden, his timings are not normal, but his opponent's timings are not normal either. So, he's responding properly. Like, I guarantee that if Serral came up against a Terran player who was sitting on one base for the first five minutes, he wouldn't take a third base for a little bit, lo a little bit longer either. Like, he'd be like, all right. He'd check, he'd try to make sure am I safe to do so, if he wasn't safe to do so, he wouldn't take the third. So, reacting to what your opponents are doing is a big part of StarCraft. Don't just blindly follow a build order without knowing at all what your opponent is doing and not reacting to it in any, any way at all. I mean, same thing the other way around. If you're Terran playing against Zerg, and it just looks like a macro opening, and you've gone for a one rack to expand, and they've gone for a hatch first, but they don't take a third base, for like, you know, it's the four minutes in, it's five minutes in, then expect some kind of a two-base attack. Especially if you're like diamond level or higher. Ooh, Liberator's gonna get a queen. That helps this Battlecruiser get some stuff done. Spore Crawler problematic. But just hanging back, this is pretty good control from Remedy Shade. He did not just wander into Doom there. They're gonna take down the gas, which is fantastic. The queens are all responding to this quite efficiently. And here we go. Firing away, he's trying to bait them into the Liberator spots, and that helps. If you can get them in the Liberator spots. All right, there we go. Whittling down these queens. The Transfuse doesn't help much when there is a Liberator on the field. And now Yuiden is in a ton of trouble. He's going to lose his spawning pool, probably. He's making additional queens to try to handle this, which is going to take some time because they don't pop all that quickly. Now the counterattack of Lings is like, well, I might as well try to do something, and guess what? It's going to do all the things, because there is not nearly enough back home at that front door to defend against this many Zerglings cruising across the map with murder on their minds, and yep, this is what I'm talking about. All your stuff is dead. Actually, hold on. That was a little bit closer than I thought it was. The Lings are going to win, but everything died for Terran. Four kills on this battle cruiser. He doesn't really feel like attacking. Oh, he's gonna jump home. Is what he's gonna do? There's a planetary fortress here. You're fine. There's not enough failings to kill that for sure. So your natural stays alive. You lose a ton of your army, which is problematic. But Uiden's army is six, so he's not in a great place either right now. His drone count is only 18 at the nine-minute mark of the match, which is bad. Ebony Shade lost some SCVs there too, two exactly. But 11 drones have gone down. Neither player doing a fantastic job. Not continuing to produce workers. This Liberator seriously has 24 kills. I mean, she's dead now, but she has 24 kills. Alrighty then. That was pretty effective stuff. 24? How do you have 24 kills, Liberator? I guess some wings ran in here. Some drones were in the mix. Uh, I don't know. A couple queens died. That's so many more kills than I thought she had. I'm flabbergasted about that. All right, so Huiden decides, you know what I need here instead of drones. You have 32 drones. Is 16 Zerglings and four Corruptors. I mean, shh, yes, you're worried about the battle cruiser coming back. I understand that. But he jumped out, which means he can't fly back over for a while. And he can't jump over for a while either because that's on cooldown. 
I understand the fear. I really do. But at this point, now that you're fairly safe, drone up. And he sort of is. He's making three more. Ebony's shade is not fully saturated. Uh, his natural base at all right now. And Ebony's shade is just kind of relying on these battle cruisers to get stuff done, which I can't really fault him for, to be honest. Like, uh, three battle cruisers, I think, just kind of win here. There are not many queens on the ground. I guess there are a total of five, which is not enough against three battle cruisers. And then there are three corruptors, so. Pushing out the Marines and tanks. I know that leaves your front door a little bit exposed, a lot of it exposed, but there's really nothing here from Uedin that says he can kill a planetary fortress. Unless he caustic sprays it down with corruptors, which totally an option, so maybe never mind. More lings here. It's gonna be a kind of a ling baneling corruptor play out of Uedin, but he doesn't have any banelings at the moment. He is starting some. Okay. He's getting some banelings. He is worried about a marine tank attack from the other side. Not that there's anything really pushing. Creep spread is looking okay. At least all of his bases are connected by creep, which is fine. Here come double battle cruisers. The Overlord does provide the early warning. That is necessary to defend against this sort of thing. The Lings come in and say, hey, can't do anything here, but you know how it is. Corruptors fighting, and you know what? Corruptors are enough to chase him away. That's a good number of corruptors now. We're looking at seven on the board. So seven corruptors are really scary. You can take down a battle cruiser and a couple volleys uh, if you're not killing them fast enough, which you can't with two BCs. And he jumped out. So very smart, right? Get your damage done, and then jump out of there if you're going to lose your BCs. Try to keep them alive forever and ever. Forty-two workers for Whedon. He's kind of saturating his three bases here fairly effectively. Natural, once again, not super healthy. Third base either. Third base done for Ebony Shade and planetary fortressing that thing would be pretty awesome. I don't know what the purpose of turrets here is. Like turrets. I guess this is a little bit better. I don't know why there are going to be turrets in this location. I guess the SCV will get around to uh, building them at some point. Production tab for Whedon is empty at the moment in time, which is not super ideal. But creep spreaded across that map, making it work here, Cap'n. And yeah, we didn't, again, not building anything. If you need to be building stuff, whether it's overlords, attacking units, bases, drones, something. Your army supply is not big enough to where it needs to be at the 12 minute mark of this match. You're floating a bunch of minerals, a bunch more lings could be on the field here. You're making some corruptors, which I'm a totally huge fan of. You have a ton of larvae here too that you could be using to build other things like, I don't know, drones? You could be expanding again. It's just all these things are not really part part of the mentality here. And part of the mentality just needs to be expanding, man. Once you get to the point that your opponent is kind of settling into a macro style and not consistently attacking you, like, for example, Ebony Shade is, you need to be expanding. He's on three bases. You should be on four. And then every couple minutes after that, just expand. You might lose some bases, but if you have enough, it doesn't matter as much. Just to expand to the point where losing a hatchery doesn't kill you. That's a recommendation. Meanwhile, Ebony Shade doing a pretty good job, honestly, walling up here. Throwing up way too many turrets for this situation. I mean, I love that he's going to be protected against some kind of like a mutilous frontal assault, which not this is, that's not really a thing. But what you want to do is put turrets back here, protecting, protecting your mineral lines, if anything. I guess maybe it keeps scouting overlords out too and overseers, but... All right, Ling's Banelings, pro tip, get Banelings speed. It makes them a million times better. It also gives them a health boost, so they're not as hard to kill before they explode on their target. They're not as hard to kill. They're not as easy to kill. They're harder to kill before they explode on their target. I think that's what we're going for. Sensor tower is pretty good. A lot of overlap here on these two, but not okay. More sensor towers are better than uh, than no sensor towers. He is getting Baneling speed. All right, so centrifugal hooks on the way. Working on high sec auto tracking. Ebony Shade is here too, increasing the range of his missile turrets. And if you were going to make this many turrets, increasing the range of those turrets is nice. Also helps Planetary Fortress hit further out, too. Look at him on the third base. The third base doesn't even have a Planetary Fortress. That's incredible to me. Changelings, no. Ebony Shade is too smart for Changelings. And then the Overseer trying to fly on in. He's going to die to this turret right here. Oh, it doesn't. Holy crap, 5 HP. I, mean, I don't know what gets out of here is the problem. <laughs> Good scout, though. Really need to see the number of barracks, number of starports that said, okay. So there's going to be some battle cruisers. There's going to be a lot of bio on the ground, too. So I think this is fine, honestly. Ling, Bane Ling Corruptor is fantastic. Additional creep spread would help you feel more comfortable out here on the map. If you have vision around your units with creep spread, it's less scary. So make sure that creep spread happens. 
keep the injects going. About 200 energy on that queen. Okay, exactly 200 energy on these queens. Which they're not spreading creep, they're not injecting, and they're not transfusing, which means they're providing no value at all to the Zerg Swarm. Army supply, 96 to 72 in favor of the Zerg. Now, here's what I'd recommend. Zerg players, do not crash into this front. Don't attack up a ramp into a Terran base. It never goes well for you. And I say that, but here goes nothing. So the Banelings are taking some fire. They're slipping through. They're wiping out all of the Marines. Oh my gosh, all of the Marines. Vikings are fighting here. Battlecruisers are going down. One Battlecruiser down. The Missile Turrets are doing serious damage against this too. The Vikings are taking shots, but the Missile Turrets are huge in defense right now. And boy, how did that kind of worked out. So again, a lot of the army for the Terran died there, but he held... He didn't lose a base, and now it's 30 to 29 army. So see, we didn't end up losing way more resources in that fight than the Terran player did. We're looking at 10,000 losses for Whedon and 6,000 losses for Ebony Shade overall in this game. Don't do it. Make them come out and kill you. Expand everywhere. Expand everywhere. Make them come stop you. Right? If they want to come out and try to kill you, then kill them. But attacking into a fortified position where the army is sitting there never goes well <sighs> it just never goes well it's amazing all right well we didn't still not spending money super effectively he's going for air carapace though because he's like ow that hurt i want my corruptors to be tankier if that's cool and that's fine he's got a fourth base which i'm huge fan of a fifth base i would not say no to honestly i found myself in this position before where i have about two thousand minerals and like four bases and i just like you know what let's spend money on bases that's the best thing to do here base here Base here, base here, base here on opposite sides of the map. So the Terran army, if it moves out and wipes out this base, you still have this one going because it can't march across the map and kill it fast enough. Right? So just build a ton of bases. Infestation pit coming in. We didn't just think about Broodlords, which I can't necessarily disagree with right now. Broodlords are probably the way to go. Meanwhile, Ebony Shade is building Banshees, Vikings, Tanks. It's an interesting little trifecta here. You want to be able to kill those Corruptors with Vikings, but... Honestly, the better idea is just to have nothing that the Corruptors can kill in your army. Just Marine tank it at this stage. That's what I would do. Marine tank, push it in. This army is largely Corruptors out of Whedon. Scan them, see what we're dealing with. And then Marine tank them to death. I guess the Lings and the Banelings were a little bit scary. I understand that. I totally understand that. You don't want to go for a ton of Marines. Although he is making a ton of Marines. Seven at a time right now. How are the upgrades on this guy? Uh, he's got stem combat shield, plus one, plus one. Pretty good stuff. On the other side, the Zerg player is sitting at plus one, plus one, plus one for his ground units. Everything has one, one there, which is cool, but no additional upgrades are forthcoming. Same thing for Ebony Shade, which is unfortunately, traditionally, uh, more normal than not, is to not have super amounts of upgrades in these matches. Ah, just start a plus two carapace and plus one melee attack. Okay, wait, I thought you had... Oh, right, because the fire carapace. Never mind, didn't have a ground carapace yet, which is a good upgrade, by the way. Should always get that upgrade. Okay, so four basin versus three basin. This is pretty even at this stage of the game. I'm liking it. You Eden, again, you have 3,000 minerals, dude. Build bases all the places. I like that you're getting a high. You need to put these drones to work because they're an expired extractor. Your third base still isn't fully saturated. Which should be a bit of a red flag to you if you look at your third base and you're not actually... Are you looking at your third base at all? Because your queens aren't injecting. Whedon has decided injects are for lesser wimps. Although this one probably has injected recently, I can tell. He's only got four larvae as a result. He's got four bases and four total larvae. I guess he just made 36 lings, so that's probably where a lot of that larvae went to. But still, injects help you so much in getting up to that max level. Ebony Shade is maxing out somehow. With, again, a lot of Vikings. I don't know why he's so worried about the Corruptors, but I guess maybe if he's worried about Broodlords, it's a good way to go. Right? Actually, it's going to be an Ultralisk Cavern, though. Okay, so Ultralisk Cavern on the way from Whedon instead of a Greater Spire, which I thought for sure where he was going to go. With all the Corruptors that he has, Broodlords would break this pretty easily. But I guess maybe he saw the Vikings and decided to go for Ultras instead. I don't think the Ultras are very good in the situation. There's a lot of tanks down here, and there are many things that can kill Ultras in StarCraft 2. But tanks are one of them. Tanks, ghosts, marauders, liberators. Those are the things that can kill Ultras dead. 
If you don't have those things, you're going to die. We do see that in professional games from time to time where the Terran only has Marines and tanks. And mostly Marines and not a lot of tanks. And then the Ultras pop from the Zerg and it's like, oh, you're just dead. You're just dead at that point. It's tragic, but it's the reality of it. Adrenal glands on the way, plus two ground carapace finishing up right now. Hold your horses. What am I thinking here? Oh, that's level two. One, one, one. Anyway, 13 mainlings coming in. Whedon's at 142 supply. Has not made a drone in a minute, I feel like. You need to be comfortable to the point where you have 70 plus workers. Ooh, Ebony Shade expanded to the 6 o'clock position. He's also got sensor towers just in the middle of nowhere that easily should be picked off by the Zerg, but he's not doing it. He's actually allowing himself to be pushed back by these sensor towers. He doesn't want to be seen, and as a result, he's hanging back and not in a position to really threaten any of these bases right now. Ebony Shade got the mental games going on. As far as tech goes, Ebony Shade has a lot more on that count. Again, that just counts static defense and upgrades, which mm, more static defense because planetary fortresses exist and a ton of turrets are already down here. And static defense is not really something that Whedon believes in. He's got like, two spores. Uh, he doesn't ha even have a spore at the third. So generally, I would say from Ebony Shade, you want to be harassing more than this. But if your Zerg opponent lets you take four bases like this and max out on a pretty scary looking army, which... I don't know why he has so many Vikings. I really don't. If your opponent is even going for Broodlords, he's got two pages. Well, two columns here. That's so many Vikings. You can handle the tanks. You're going to be okay. He wants to bring the Queens along, but hasn't spread the creep to the point that the Queens can really come along. So that's going to be a slowdown for you. Production tab again. Empty for Whedon. Always be making stuff, especially if you're not maxed out. If you're not, if you are maxed out, then go attack and then make more stuff. Ooh, he's actually knocking down these rocks that allow somewhere to hide. Which have I actually seen this done in a game I've cast? I don't think so. Love provides some light for vision purposes. All right, again, attacking into an entrenched Terran position with a million siege tanks and a hajillion corrupt or Vikings. The ultras are in the house, but the tank count is insane, and all of the ultras die. That's what I'm talking about. 187 to 85 supply in favor of the Terran. Attacking up a ramp into an established Terran position will get you killed every single time. 18,000 resources lost for Whedon. 7,000 lost for Ebony Shade. And Ebony Shade decides, you know what? That was pretty good. Let's go. 27. 27 Swarm Hosts in production for Whedon right now. I'd, as far as base defense goes, nope. That's not going to do it for you. The Vikings are trying to find these Corruptors to kill them. Thinking about it anyway, decides not to. I think after catching a glimpse, surprisingly enough, these queens never really joined the party. I don't know why they're here, but they're all going to die. The marines are 2-2, which is nice. Pretty decent upgrades on the mech here as well. You can see plus two coming in from all those across the board. Whedon's going for Anitus. Is he going to try to win this thing by Anitusing and like base racing with locusts? That does sound interesting, except their buildings can fly. He's gonna... Wow. All right. Is... No. No way. There's no way this works. What? Okay. It didn't work. A lot of Marines died. But now the Swarm Hosts have 41 seconds of absolute ineffectiveness. They could do nothing until that cooldown is up. So very smartly gonna go ahead and take down this base. <laughs> the Vikings are handling the handful of Corruptors that exist pretty effectively. I really gotta say here. Trying to figure out why a bunch of marines died in that situation? I don't know. Nidus Network going to be sniped. Neural Parasite coming in for the Infestors that don't exist. Interestingly enough. All right. So, again, defensive swarm hosts not very good. They pop here. They kill some of these ground units. But the Banshees are not having a problem with it at all. And can they last long enough to get here and take down some of these tanks? I don't know. Ebony Shade is, again, not producing much back home either, but the tanks are firing, and he loses some of his tanks, but not all of them. Not all of them. Some Thorm hosts wandering on past do get murderized, and the Banshees are having a great time against these dudes. A fantastic time. Now, bonus damage from Landed Vikings is not proof. Never mind. It doesn't matter. Ebony Shade is your winner in 24 minutes and 37 seconds. Pretty fantastic display out of the Terran. Keeping stuff alive, staying alive, baiting the Zerg player into attacking into you a couple times. 
wiping out the army and then deciding I have a pretty much maxed out army after that engagement. Let's go for the attack. And he did. Resources lost here. Just disgusting. 26,000 for the Zerg player, 12,000 for Ebony Shade. Ended up losing all three of his battle cruisers, 76 marines, only seven tanks at the end of the day. Ended with four of them. So pretty decent number overall. And then 18 swarm hosts died. 177 Zerglings. All five ultras died without really accomplishing much at all. 32 lings went down. And just over overall, a very nice counterattack out of Ebony Shade. And we didn't, again, just got to expand a bunch, force the Terran to come to you. Wipe them out, remax. Not on swarm hosts. I'm just gonna say that. Why uh, don't don't do that? Don't remax on swarm hosts. They are actually really bad at defense. So don't do that. If any, I mean, really, almost anything would have been better there. A bunch of lings and banelings would have been really fantastic. He could have made the lings real fast, morphed them into banes, came in, wiped out the Terran army as it was on creep, and kind of reset. Right, still had his bases going, but. The end of the day, it's floating a ton of money, didn't really inject super well, and these are the things we look at it into the void of things to improve on. That's all it is. Okay, so great job by Ebony Shade. Again, I would recommend harassing. You will get further as a Terran player consistently harassing against your Zerg opponents than you will sitting in your bases like this. And the Battle Cruiser were great harassment. I understand. Liberator, good too. But after that, there was just nothing else. You really just need to send drops out, need to send Battle Cruisers out if you're interested in doing that. Just little pushes from time to time, just trying to whittle down the Zerg forces. But, uh, yeah, you kind of played this like it was a, a campaign mission in StarCraft II, which is how they teach you how to play StarCraft in the campaign, which is really bad. But you just kind of sit up, sit down, defend, 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 expand a few times, defend, 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 get up a huge army, defend, 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 and then attack when you have a big unstoppable army. It's not great. It's not going to help you in the future, but it won you a game today, so congratulations. All right. Well, that is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void and an Into the Void. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.
to the boy 